Appreciate everybody coming out uh, to cover Penn State football. We've got a beautiful day out there. Uh, quickly, uh, we'll view, re review the game, the Maryland game. Um, obviously, uh, really proud of the guys, how we went on the road and played in a tough environment. Um, you know, Sean's first start on the road in the Big Ten, so very pleased. Uh, the film, uh, you know, really you know, showed the same thing that we thought uh, after the game. I thought probably the most impressive thing is the level that we played for four quarters with the twos, with the threes, and some spots, the fours. Um, you know, it was impressive. Um, they played up to the standard for four quarters, so very pleased with that. Um, the coaching staff players of the week on offense was Michael Bennett and Sean Clifford. On defense was Tariq Castro-Fields and Ellis Brooks. And then on special teams was John Reed. So very, very pleased with those guys you know, getting into Purdue. Uh, obviously, got a lot of respect for Coach Brom and what he's been able to do kind of throughout his career. Uh, and then obviously, specifically at Purdue, Obviously, last year what they were able to do upsetting uh, number two Ohio State, number 19 Iowa, um, it was very very impressive. Returning 14 starters, um, obviously you know their offensive coordinators. They got co-offensive coordinators and co-defensive coordinators with Brian Brom and Jamarcus Shepard. They've done a really nice job. You know, Coach Brom, I think, calls the plays on offense. It's his system. Um, They've always done a great job throwing the ball. You know, from a quarterback position, receivers, tight ends, they do a great job getting the running backs involved as well. Um, they're an 11 personnel team predominantly, uh, but they will get in 21 personnel. They will get in uh, no running back sets, 0-1, so tight, only tight ends and receivers on the field. They'll go 12 personnel too. They're ranked number one uh, in the Big Ten in passing and, and six in all of college football. Uh, we've been impressed with uh, Bryson Hopkins, who we know all the way back uh, from our days in Nashville, who's having a really nice career there. Um, David Bell, who we recruited and is playing at a really high level for them. And then Ahmad, Ahmad Anderson, who's playing really well for them as well. Those guys jump out to us. Um, and then on the defensive side of the ball, uh, Nick Holt, and then Anthony Poindexter, who I've known for a long time and is a good friend. Um, they're doing a nice job. Uh, I think you know, defensively still trying to find their identity a little bit, um, but but got a lot of respect for what Coach Holt's done in his career. He's been a defensive coordinator for a long time, USC, Washington, Western Kentucky, and obviously now Purdue. Um, you know, they're 29th in the country in sacks, um, and then number five, uh, Karlaftis really jumps out at you as, as a freshman that we recruited and were, were uh, aware of. Um, you know, number 44 linebacker Ben Holt, and then number 27 Navon Mosley, uh, their safety. And then on special teams, uh, Kevin Wolfhausen runs their special teams. Um, you know, he's been doing it for a number of years at Purdue and Connecticut. Uh, obviously, they've got some injuries uh, with their quarterback, their slot receiver, who's also their return specialist, which has a significant impact on what they do on special teams. So it'll be interesting in how they handle that. Um, you know, are they still going to be a, a return team on special teams? Or are they going to go after you in blocks? Now, obviously, not having him, uh, you know, factors in. At least we're, we're based on everything we're hearing. They won't have him. So, uh, open up the questions. Rich Garcella, Red Eagle. Good afternoon, James. Hey, Rich. Can you describe the talent, depth, and competition you have at linebacker now, and how have they played so far? Yeah, you know, I, I've been I've been pleased. It's a little bit like what you guys like to talk about so much is the running back rotation. You guys don't talk about the, the nine deep at linebacker that we rotate. Um, but yeah, you know, Micah's doing some really good things, obviously. Um, but it's impressive when you know Micah gets ejected for a targeting call, and Jesse Lucchetti goes in. As we all know, we got tremendous confidence in Jesse, but he goes in, and and you, and you really don't even uh, skip a beat. Uh, and then obviously Jan Johnson and Ellis Brooks now are, are splitting reps uh, almost one to one and both of those guys. I mean Jan starts the game off I think with a huge interception to kind of set the tone and then Ellis Brooks comes in and you know, makes a bunch of plays and has a lot of production and sacks and tackles for loss and things like that. Jesse can also play the like 
like linebacker position for as well. And then you know, Cam Brown, Brandon Smith, and Charlie Catcher are all three guys at the, at the field backer position we feel good about too. So uh, that helps us on special teams. It helps us on defense. You know, we went from a situation where uh, we, are, you know, we didn't have great depth at the linebacker position now that we're able to keep those guys fresh, rotate them in, and still, you know, still be able to play at a really high level. And, you know, the young guys, you know, although Ellis has played, this is where he's getting the most experience and getting the most reps. So you're going to see him, I think, get better and better each week. And then guys like Brandon Smith and, and Catcher and Raquetta, same thing with those guys. Just you know, the amount of reps that they're getting, they're going to gain confidence and play faster. And, and uh, you know, all very instinctive guys, but the game's going to slow down them. So you know, we're excited about that unit. Derek Lovars, what's your time's leader? Hi, James, how are you? Good, Derek, how are you? I'm doing very well. James, uh, approaching the fifth game of the season, have you had any changes to your uh, your green, yellow, red lights for your true freshmen, and, and how has that uh, group handled things as a whole so far? Yeah, so we've had we've had a little bit um, of some changes. So uh, Lance Dixon is a guy um, that we've kind of moved into the yellow category, and they're, they're going to kind of hold his games um, for later in the year. Or if there's an injury, we still feel like we could play him, but just not getting enough reps right now for it to make sense in burning his year. And then that would be the same situation, um, you know, at tackle um, with Caden Wallace, you know, a guy that, you know, we were just playing on PAT field goal. It didn't make sense at that point to burn his year for that. Those guys could slide back to greens right now, but we're going to hold them. Uh, we also could see ourselves, um, you know, this week and maybe the next couple weeks playing some guys that haven't played um, on special teams to gain them some experience. So like uh, Dunmore and TJ um, and, and Rudolph, we can see those guys you know, playing for us on, on special teams and maybe get some opportunities on offense and defense as well. So, um, you know, especially the home games. Mark Logan, Rich Allen, Tom McCall. Hi, James. Hey, Mark. How do things like Long boy chain and position room nicknames like the well dog bring those position rooms together around their coaches. And two, why did you bring the disco ball in Maryland? What was the last one you said? Why did you bring the disco ball? <laughs> oh, <laughs> disco ball. Um, so a couple things. Um, yeah, I, I think we we've had the names. That's been something that's gone on for a long time. Um, you know, position coaches, you know, obviously Sean's the one that everybody is probably most aware of, uh, but each, each, each kind of position has it. It's something that the players and coaches come up with together. You know, obviously the long boys, the running back, those guys eating up grass and eating up yardage, something they came up with before the season just to have fun with it, uh, talk about their role and responsibility within the team parameters, um, and then having some personality and having some fun with it. So. We've had the wild dogs from day one and, and Sean's uh, dog bone, um, but uh, every, every, they, all, they all seem to have it and they're, and they're having fun with it. And, you know, I, for me, you know, I, I, like anything, there's, there's a fine line with it, but you know, ultimately for me, I want to make sure that we're playing a brand of football that people can really um, respect a brand of football that our fans and our lettermen and our community can feel good about, about how our guys conduct themselves on the sideline, how they conduct themselves during the game, how they play uh, from a discipline standpoint, um, how they are in the classroom, how they are in the community. Those are the things that really, that really matter. And then I think you know you gotta you gotta allow them to have a little personality and some other things as well and kind of embrace that. It's no different than you know as a dad of my two daughters. Um, you know I can't fight every battle, um, and I want my daughters to to kind of have some personality and and their own strengths and, and 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 figure out their weaknesses as well. And it's the same thing with our team. But ultimately, I'm, I'm concerned about how our guys are in the classroom and how they are in the community and then the style of play uh, and how we conduct ourselves on the field, you know, representing our fan base and representing this community. So uh, a little personality um, you know, that may be different um, here, um, I'm good with. 
Frank Bonani, your daily record. Hi, good afternoon, James. Hey, Frank, how are you? Real good, thanks. Your wide receivers, beyond KJ and Doc, the rest of those guys, how do you think they're developing, the rotation is going? Are, are guys stepping up and producing there as you wish so far? Yes. Yeah, I've been I've been really pleased with the with the group. Justin Shorter continues to, to gain confidence and, and is making plays. Obviously, to play, you know, the glance post uh, on the RPO play that you know he was able to you know, catch took a big hit. Uh, I think the guy got thrown out for a targeting penalty and still made the play. Daniel George, uh, we're very pleased with his development. Cam Sullivan Brown, you know, as well. I feel like we got really good depth there. And then you talked about KJ Hamler and Matt Kippenhammer and Weston Carr. All those guys are, are doing great things. Dan Chasin is a guy we talked about before the season, you know, expecting him to do some really good things. And, and Jahan, you know, just continues to grow. I uh, had a really good meeting with him the other night. So, um, you know, as the season goes on, you know, you know we're going to have to continue to, to make strides and we're going to have to continue to get better. Um, but, but, yeah, so far so good um, with them and the tight ends in the past game. Mike Gross, look at your newspapers. Mike? Mike? Hello? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. Hi, no problem. Hey, how good, man. How are you? I'm great, man. Um, how much do you guys uh, script plays going into the game? What extent do you do that? And uh, I'm asking because it seemed like you had so many right answers. Like Ricky had an unbelievable game as a play caller last week. How much of that was stuff that you kind of were confident would be available going in, and how much of that is him, you know, reading the lay of the land as the game goes along? Yeah, I think it's it's a little bit both, and I think a lot of it has to do with that week. You come up with your plan, you watch the film, you got a pretty good idea of how people are going to play you, and then also, okay, you got a guy like KJ Hamler. What are they? You know, what are they most likely going to do to try to? limit his impact in the game and then you get into the game and people are, are doing what you thought they were doing um, or they're a little bit different and you have to adjust and adjust quickly um, so you know each week you know, um, you know I listen to other coaches press conferences in our, in our conference as well as well as nationally and um, that's what you do each week you go in each week with a plan that you feel really good about obviously personnel factors into that matchups factor into that as well um, but yeah I thought I thought our offense you know, did a phenomenal job um, you know, I thought you know Ricky you know, had a really good feel and a really good plan and a flow of call in the game and then I thought you know Sean obviously went out and executed it and right now you know our offensive line now has had multiple weeks where they haven't given up a sack and that you know that defense was that defense was one of the better sack teams in the country and had you know two guys on each on each edge that were you know up there and uh, sat the sack leaders in our conference so uh, our offensive line is doing some good things you know, I thought Sean did a really good job of adjusting our protections you know based on, on what we had studied all week on film so yeah I, I was very pleased with with what our offense did in the game and, and we got to continue taking strides and we got to continue building Donnie Collins, Grand Times Tribune. <coughs> hey, Ricky. Hey, Donnie. Hey, Will Levis got 20.25 snaps in Maryland, got a bunch in Idaho. <coughs> how important has that been for him to, to get significant game action early? And, and how have you seen him develop with that at the start of the season? I obviously need to get my hearing checked because I have a hard time hearing you guys. And I have a bunch of Chris or the, you know, Mark Brennan will tell me what, what you guys say. But yeah, Levis. Um, you know, we've been very pleased. You know, Levis is a guy we've been very excited about since since we recruited him. And you know, same thing in school. Um, you know, he's, if he doesn't have a 4.0, he's got close to a 4.0. I think he may have like a 398. Um, you know, he prepares like crazy. He's very talented. Uh, had a great competition with Sean, and has handled it all really well. So whenever that happens, and you got a guy that you know can play um, and you get into some situations where you can get him on the field and get him some opportunities I think it's extremely valuable for him and I think it's really valuable for our program I think the other thing that's important 
is although this was a game that they got into because of the score, um, if, if you look at the film, they, they pretty much had their number one defense in and their number one offense in the, the entire game. You know, so those guys were able to get in. I thought the first couple drives, we weren't as clean as we'd like to be, but then after that, you know, I think we scored twice. Um, and, and Will was a big part of that. You know, uh, he's got as talented as an arm as I've been around. And he's a big body kid that can run. I think you guys saw that, you know, in the game. So uh, continue to develop him, you know, for his future and continue to develop him for our future uh, is critical. And, and we couldn't be more happy with him and his, really his whole family. He comes from a football family, unbelievably supportive. And, um, and we think he's got a very bright future. Corey Geiger, Elton Amir. Hi, Jay. How are you? Good, Corey. How are you? Have you found that stadium yet? What's that do? Have you found that stadium yet that you want to host that game at? That field, that field thing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so it's three L. Oh, that was in past that day. Oh yeah. You two guys are usually working in tandem or something. <laughs> I, I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily say that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, we, we've really had this opportunity or similar opportunities for probably four years now. And um, I really wasn't kind of on board with doing it for a lot of different reasons. And, um, you know, we have our own WPSU around so much, and they do such a fantastic job for us. The more we kind of went through it, I said, you know, the, the reality is it's not going to be a whole lot different than what we already have. It's not like these guys are walking around with like HBO plastered all around them. So we have cameras around our building all the time. And like I said before, WPSU does a fantastic job for us. So, um, you know, after talking to the leadership council about it and after talking to the coaching staff, uh, we just felt like it was the right thing to do. We just got such a wonderful um, university here and, and program and history and traditions um, and obviously the community and the type of support that we get um, that I want to make sure everybody in the United States knows how special this place is and to be able to have somebody like HBO has tremendous expertise in doing this to be able to kind of peek behind the curtain and allow people you know maybe a more comprehensive review of how we do things, um, I think is important. And I think probably the most important piece of it is people getting to know our players on, on a more significant level, people getting to know our staff, coaches and staff on a, on a more significant level because we've got great people. And um, I think sometimes with football, with the uniforms and the helmets, that there's a disconnect sometimes um, with the people that are in those helmets. So, you know, what, what better opportunity to allow our story to be told on a national, um, really global level. So, you know, we, we've embraced it. Um, and, you know, 
as you know, I'm, I'm trying to keep things as normal as possible, but uh, the WPSU stuff, I think, has, has helped us all be more comfortable. Hey, James. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good. You're looking sharp, man. Thank you. It's uh, October. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so I'm doing the Real Men Wear Pink campaign. Love so, that. Uh, you'll see me like this for a while. Appreciate <laughs> it. Um, Sean Clifford played not just well, but well against the Blitz last week. I think the first time that Maryland didn't Blitz him on a pass play was in the second quarter. How important is it for a young quarterback to have success, not only in that game, but to show other defenses that he has the mental processing ability to beat the Blitz? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's very important. I think you know, that's, that's the critical things um, that when you evaluate quarterbacks and how well they're playing, it's how are they on third downs, how are they in the red zone, it's wins and losses. And it's, it's, you know, can you make plays under pressure? And that's making throws on time. That is adjusting the protection <clears throat> to pick up the blitz. Um, and then that's obviously being able to mix some things in as a play caller, Coach Ronnie, whether it's screens or moving the pocket, things like that, that can help us too. So, yeah, I think it's, I think it's really important because once you put on film that you can't do that, then you're going to see a full dose of it. Hey, James. Hey, ben. Obviously, not having to deal with Ron Moore from a football perspective is a net positive, but how do you go about, <clears throat> excuse me, appreciating guys as a coach that maybe aren't on your team you to just see them and go, wow, he's really good, but at the same time, you know, not staying up at night over it? No, I, I think it's a great point. Um, you know, from, from what we've heard, you know, we're happy because it doesn't sound like it's a season ending injury, which is great because I think it's great for college football. I think it's great for the Big Ten. He's a special, special player. Uh, very talented, fun to watch. Um, to be honest with you, I, I think our players and our staff would like for him to be playing in the game. I mean, you come to Penn State because you want to play against the best players and you want to play against the best teams. Um, I think it's great for college football. I think it's great for us. Um, but yeah, I think. I think our players and our staff have an unbelievable amount uh, of respect for Purdue, the program, uh, and the university, and their personnel. So I don't know whether he's going to travel this week or not, but if he does, I'd love the opportunity to tell him uh, what, a, what a fantastic football player we are. You know, a big fan. James, I had a lot of fans ask about how much impact or how much Penn State's going to get to look over, I guess, what HBO is doing this week. ESPN did Alabama, uh, you know, ESPN has other restrictions. HBO doesn't have any of that stuff. Do you get to look at this before it goes up? Is Penn State Athletics looking at it before it goes up? I just, I've had a lot of fans ask about that. Yeah, I, you know, I'm not obviously going to spend a whole lot of time. We're, we're going to keep our process and focus on the things that, that we can do. But yeah, our, without getting into the details of our contract and things like that, Obviously, Penn State wouldn't agree to do something like this if we weren't completely comfortable with all the details and yeah. specifics of it. So, um, so that was thoroughly vetted on the front end. We've had great discussions, and so far they've been great partners. So, um, but yeah, I think you know Penn State. Uh, we're, we're fairly conservative, yeah. and uh, you know we're going to be you know we're going to be very diligent on our front end of, of looking at those things. Big fancy hard knocks, and they wonder. That's all. Yeah, I, I think there's going to be some hard knocks aspects of this. I don't know if it's going to be as to colorful. That yeah. Um, um, but but yeah, I, I do think there's a fine line because you know it, it does allow you to tell the story and, and, and be really authentic. You know, so um, but there's there's a fine line there. Thanks. Yes, sir. Hey James, how are you? Good. How are you? Doing well, thank you. Um, David Bell is a guy that, as you mentioned, recruited pretty heavily. Uh, had a bit of a breakout last week with Ron Dunmore on the sideline. Um, dominated Indianapolis high school football. What, what did you see from him that made him such a, a, a top tier prospect? And leading into this game, <coughs> when it's him, when it's Plummer, guys that you had just limited sample size of tape on, how do you handle that pass attack when you've got the freshman wide receiver who's on the rise and you've got this red true freshman quarterback who's only played a couple games? Yeah, that, that's a little bit of a challenge, to be honest with you. Like I was saying on special teams, not having Rondale, that significantly impacts how they're going to call special teams. Same thing on offense. Who's going who's gonna to play that role? Do they feel like they have someone that can play the role, or are they going to play differently? I think probably the second half 
of the Minnesota game is probably the most valuable half for us once the personnel changes happen. Um, but but he reminds me in a lot of ways of like Chris Godwin and Deshaun Hamilton, big, strong, great route runner, catches seems to catch everything uh, in his vicinity, and. Um, you know, even during the recruiting process, he's just got a very steady, level-headed temperament. Uh, and you see that on, on the field. You know, he's put some size on, he graduated early, he's put some size on, but uh, really what we thought we were recruiting is what you see on tape. But yeah, I think your point is a good one. You know, the, the changes, um, you could make arguments, you know, whether it's a positive for Penn State or not, but you know, it is concerning when you watch the tape and you say, this is not, you know, the team that we're going to see on Saturday, not only from a personnel standpoint, but also stylistically. Hey James, um, what about Noah Kane and Devin Floyd? And when the fifth game, like, how much have you been with them too? And are you surprised that at this point, after four games, that they're still you know, in this mix and still, you know, as a, as a starter on that? No, but I think you guys are. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably the number one question that I get this year is, is the running backs. But, um, I think I think they're doing great. I actually think the way we're using all four of them helps them kind of slowly but surely keep developing without too much on their plate, um, and also keeps all those guys fresh. I think you'll continue to see there'll be you know one guy that has a huge week or another guy that has a huge week again based on scheme and based on matchups and, and things like that, but. You know, we've been very pleased with them. I know the week before, you know, in pass protection, I thought I thought Pitt was very aggressive. Um, and I thought we did a better job last week of picking some of those pressures up. I think the other thing that helped us, I think we may have talked about last week. Sometimes I forget whether I was talking to you guys or the staff or, or, or internal media or whatever. But the other thing is just having the aspect of the cut. Those linebackers and DBs coming and they know there's a chance that that running back will cut them, it changes your mentality. If, if you've never seen a cut on tape, you're just gonna run you know, reckless you know, with abandon and, and not worry about a guy going low on you. But when you see on tape that a guy will cut you, it changes up your temperament. So I think that helped too. Hey James, uh, going back to Mark's question earlier, uh, the lawn boys, is that something that you sign off on and also uh, do you consider yourself a, a player's coach and what does that term mean to you yeah uh, no I, I I don't I don't sign and sign off on <coughs> Sean's dog bone um, I, I got probably things that are probably more important uh, on my list and, and things like that um, but but I think what happens is I think when you're in a leadership position, I mean, Sandy does it obviously for the athletic department, President Barron does it for our entire university. It's not like we have a hundred rules. Our coaches and our players and our staff kind of understand what we're all about from a cultural <clears throat> perspective. And everybody knows what fits within that culture and what doesn't. And there's times where I do get asked, hey, are you okay with this, you know, or not? Um, but yeah, it's not like I'm signing off on everything. It's just like we were talking about the, the HBO. It's not like I'm gonna go back and watch that, you know, that show and sign off on it. We got people that, you know, that's, that's what they do for a living that, that are qualified to do those things. Um, but I think more importantly, it's the overall culture. Our guys know what's acceptable within our program and what's not. And part of that, as you guys know, on Sundays in our meeting, you know, I put up examples of mistakes that are made across the country in professional sports and college sports. Um, not that we're perfect, uh, but hopefully we can learn from other people's mistakes. We're gonna make mistakes too. There's gonna be things that you see that, that, <coughs> that you're unsure of. There's gonna be some, time, some things that our fans see that they're unsure of, but I, again, I would hope now after six years that we have built up um, some credit uh, with, with our fans that they know that we're putting a priority on academics, we're putting a priority on community service and developing these young people to be leaders and, and tremendous husbands and fathers you know, one day 
And I think for the most part, we've done a pretty good job of that. And there's going to be a hiccup from time to time, but I think I think we've we've earned that. I hope people feel like that we've earned that. Hey, Jim. Uh, I wanted to ask you about the challenge of coaching and playing aggressive defense with the way that targeting is being called. It just seems like it's more prevalent this year. I think there were a couple instances in the Maryland game. And how do you think Micah maybe came out of that? Do you think he'll, be ben he'll benefit maybe from having learned some things or not? I think it's a pretty good example of really tying together what we just talked about. Uh, we spent a lot of time, a lot of time, talking about um, fundamentals of the game, not only because they're the ways that you're going to be the most successful play in the game, but also because we are so concerned about our players' health and safety, and also the guys we play against, their health and safety. I mean, part of the reason that targeting is a penalty now is because it puts them and the person they're hitting at risk. So we spend a ridiculous amount of time talking about that. But back to your point, what, what happened when Michael Parsons was ejected? He put his head down, he was upset, he put his helmet off, ran off the field, went into the locker room. Wasn't in the stands, pumping the fans up that you see sometimes. Wasn't slamming his helmet and screaming. Um, you know, I, I thought that was a really good example. You got Michael Parsons who there's, you know, cares as much as anybody in our program about Penn State's success. And he was disappointed, but handled it the right way, owned up to it, ran off the field. Um, you know, I, I will tell you, Neil, something he did do that I wasn't happy with. He went in the locker room and, and tweeted. Now, that was addressed with our entire team. But again, what did he tweet? something really positive about the team and my boys are out there holding it down. You know, I don't want to tweet, you know, during the game, you know. Um, but, again, I just think it's an example of how Micah handled the adversity, running off the field and doing it with class and then going in the locker room, you know. And, and I will say there, there, there's a lot of talk about changing that rule that you won't send a guy in a locker room because that puts him in a tough situation just sitting in a locker room by himself for an hour and a half. You know, and we create a spectacle by sending him off the field. Just take his helmet and leave him on the sideline. So I think you'll see some of those changes maybe coming in football, but um, it kind of ties, you know, both your things together. So, you know, and again, I don't, I don't want this to come off the wrong way. I got, I got 121 18 to 22 year old males. We don't always handle things perfectly. We make mistakes, but overall, the six years that, that we've been here, um, I couldn't be more proud of how our guys have, have handled things. Coach, uh, obviously Clifford coming off a, a very strong game, but on the whole, how would you evaluate his growth as a leader, as a player to this point in the year? And what are you and the coaches most focused on with him this week and, and moving forward? Yeah, it's it's building that confidence. And we talk a lot about, you know, confidence comes from preparation. And I think he's doing a really good job with that. You never know going on the road the first time, but we had talked a lot about what that environment was going to be like. We, we did a lot to try to recreate that environment and practice every single day. And I was a little worried about him in pregame because he was so juiced up, and so jacked up, and so excited. And we come out and they're all they're booing us in their student section. And, and he was so jacked up, I wanted to make sure that he wasn't too far in that direction. But I thought our guys did a really good job of funneling all that energy in that stadium in a really positive direction and enjoyed it. I think our guys enjoyed going on the road and, and playing in a tough environment like that. And that's, that's where you want to be as a program. So we got to continue to build on that, being a great road team. Um, but this week, you know, obviously we're focused on being a great home team and going on the road. Coach, how you doing? Good, how are you? I'm good. Hey, the pretty good defense. How do they go about creating the pressure? I think they have like 11 sacks and four games. How do they go about creating that pressure? And secondly, what do you guys have to do this week to keep Sean upright? Well, I think a couple things. I think, you know, um, they do a really good job with their blitz and twist package. And then I think they also do a really good job of, of having weekly blitzes and twists to try to, to, try to challenge your protections in, in what you do. Um, and that's always kind of the chess match as the offensive coordinator and O-line coach is 
identifying what they do on film, what are the tells to determine where the pressure is coming from, whether it's the shade or the three technique, or whether it's the skew of the linebackers, or whether it's the rotation of the safeties, or whatever it may be that week that is the tell. Um, and then you set your protection based on that. And then obviously, let's figure out as soon as we possibly can, what's the blitz or the pressures of the week that we haven't seen before. And what you hope is your normal rules handle them, but if not, then you have to make those adjustments on the sidelines quickly. And I thought that's one of the things I think Sean did such a good job. I thought Sean was so confident pre-snap in what the coverage was gonna be. He was so confident pre-snap and what the blitz was going to be, that that's when people talk about the game slowing down. It's because you've anticipated what they're going to do, and you're not trying to figure it all out after the ball snapped. You can anticipate it. Um, and we need to continue to be able to do that. And there's going to be weeks where, based on film study and things like that, we got a good plan, but it doesn't cover it all. And we got to be able to allow our rules to handle those things to show up in the game that we haven't prepared for because there always will be that on offense, defense, and special teams. But then we also need to be able to make adjustments on the sideline too. James, earlier you said that you weren't on board with having an HBO style show um, you know, here for a number of reasons. What were some of those different reasons? Yeah, that's why I didn't stay them. I just said a number of reasons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, you know, I. A few years ago, obviously, we were at a different point as a program. Um, you know, um, you know where our locker room is at right now, our chemistry, our depth, um, recruiting, uh, our staff. It's it's you know without getting into to specifics, it's just I think we're in a good place right now. We can handle. But I think the point I made that was probably the biggest point that I made to Mark is that. There's cameras around all the time anyway with WPSU, so it's not that different for us. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, I think you guys, you know, you watch these shows that are produced with other programs, you watch these shows that are produced with, with uh, professional organizations, and there's, there's good and bad that comes with that. Um, but I also think that's, that's what makes it real, and that's what makes it authentic. James, did you ever think you'd see the day where you needed an in-game tweeting policy? Well, we, we have a tweeting policy in general. I wouldn't necessarily call it an in-game, but you know, when you know the hard part is our guys are on their phones all the time, so you know they, we allow them to do the music pre-game, but I don't want them on social media pre-game, and I don't want them on their phones at all at halftime. So we've had, to be honest, we've had a, a phone and a, and a social media policy probably as long as I've been a head coach. Um, um, it's something you have to address because, as you guys know, uh, it's such a huge part of our society now. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, I don't think it's, it's too shocking at all, to be honest with you. And, and I mean, I think we've all seen, we've seen, you know, in, in, in the pros, we've seen people, you know, uh, what do they call it, live, you know, live stream the locker room, which is supposed to be sacred. And, We've seen a number of things, you know, like that pop up. So whenever those things happen, no different than anything else, we show our team, and you know, obviously um, those things are not appropriate. Do you think there's such a thing as a confidence boost for an offensive coordinator? Because you spend a lot of time this off season talking about kind of idea spread and Ricky evolving, and I think with more experience, more opportunities, you're kind of going to see that growth. Do you think Saturday could be that for him? Yeah, you know, I don't know. I mean, you look at you look at our first game, Ricky's first game call in, in the Fiesta Bowl uh, was, was phenomenal. So, um, yeah, I think every year Brett Pry gets better. You know, we should. Every year Ricky gets better. Every year I hope to get better. Um, that's all the position coaches. That's the coordinators. That's the players. And does experience count? Yes, no doubt about it. Um, because obviously, whenever you're going through something for the first time. Um, there's challenges that come with that. So it's no different than what you guys do professionally. You got a tough job and you're much better in year three than you were in year one. You're much better in year 10 than you were in year four. Um, so yeah, the, the experience counts. Now, what that game this past Saturday meant, you know, I'm not sure, but it was a really positive step for our entire organization. You 
you've said that, that Friday's performance was, was one of the most complete games you've seen uh, since, you, since you've been here. When you have time to look back at that film and you're able to break things down more, is there one overarching theme or one reason why you can point to you know, this kind of, of being that game? Was it just a, a good week of practice? Was it Sean? Was it Ricky? Well, what really helped or kind of lead to that? Yeah, I guess I guess that's when you when you make that type of a statement, it's not one thing. It's it's so many things. I thought the, the, the guys were ready to play. I think we've created really good depth to keep guys fresh. Um, you know, the most important stat you have is scoring offense and scoring defense, and we obviously did well in those areas. Um, our special teams has been pretty uh, clutch all year long, and we're going to need them to continue to be. Um, We've seen a lot of guys play, and a lot of guys play at a high level. Um, you know, I thought we handled the noise well. You know, I thought we handled our guys a little fresh and fast, so I think we handled the bye week well. So there's, I, Josh, I think the reason why I, I felt that way is not because of one or two or three points. I think it's all the facts. I think because of what I, what I just said is that you know I felt like we handled the bye week well. I thought our guys were fresh. I thought they were confident. Um, you know I thought we had a lot of guys playing the game and, and, and play well. I thought our, our plans on offense, defense, and special teams were really good. And what we what we planned for showed up. There wasn't a whole lot of changes. Um, you know I thought we handled the noise well and prepared for it. Um, I thought our kids invested the way they should have invested. They didn't take a bye week and just enjoy it. They enjoyed it, but also invested in the program and invested in themselves. So, yeah, again, I don't, I don't think it's one specific thing. It's, it's all of it. You know, we, t we took a, a, a positive step, but we're going to have to continue taking steps because, you know, in this conference um, and a lot of conferences across the country and just how competitive college football is, you got to learn from it, and then you got to move on. You got to take those experiences you learn and grow. And I think confidence is as big of a part of it as any. I think we played like a confident football team on Friday night. We're going to need to continue to do that. Time for two more. By this time next week, James, we may know the kickoff time for the whiteout game. Uh, I think a lot of fans are worried or don't want it to be a noon game. I know that's been talked about a lot in the Big Ten this year. Do you have any preference on? Uh, you know, what time that game will kick off? Yeah, the earlier the better. I like I like them. If I can get it at 11 a.m., 11 a.m., so that I can play the game and I can go hang out with my wife and kids for a few hours, um, I can tell right now just people. <laughs> <laughs> so, do, Sandy, can we do 11 a.m. games? Are we even allowed to do that? No. Um, no, I mean, obviously, I, I honestly, I do think especially if you're the away team, you know, and you got to travel. We didn't get back to four o'clock in the morning. You know, uh, by the time I got bed, it was five. I was out recruiting, you know, all day long. Um, so the, the, the away games are tough. I remember, you know, Monday night football in the NFL. Everybody loves Monday night football, except for coaches. I remember getting back at five o'clock and walking right into the office and not even going home. Um, so, you know, um, you know, I can't make any um, um, announcements at this time. Obviously, all my focus is on, on Purdue anyway. Yeah. Um, but but we'll, we'll be happy and we'll embrace whatever time they say the game is. And I know our fans will as well because our fans, I've been noticing it a lot lately, our fans are getting more and more excited about the 12 o'clock games because we're, we're embracing the uh, breakfast tailgating. <laughs> And then we're embracing the fact that it leaves us much more time to tailgate on the back end. So it's really, it's really a positive. It's really a win. So I've, I've been noticing that all over social media. Chris has been showing me that we're starting to kind of flip this thing. Uh, our, our fans, in some ways, prefer the 12 o'clock games. That's why this place will be sold out and rocking uh, right after we finish our breakfast burritos. <laughs> Thanks, man. Anything else for Coach? All right, thank you, Coach. Thanks, guys. Thanks.